Guaranteed? Oh, no, good. Cool. <laughs> Perfect. You started recording? Yeah. I drink copious amounts of tea. I see. Yeah. That's good. It's healthy. All right. How are you? I'm cool. Okay. Well, uh, my par I'm half Moroccan, half British, and my parents emigrated here when I was five years old. And uh, soon after my parents split, my father passed away and uh, my mom, uh, you know, it was really hard on her. Like she, she, you know, she was a single mother basically. And, um, you know, single mother raising two kids and, uh, you know, on welfare, had no money, had nothing. And uh, I guess that's when I started my entrepreneurial journey. I was five years old. I used to, my mom loves telling a story. She's British, right? She's got an accent. She's like, oh, he loved picking up garbage, you know? He'd come up home with all these different things. Uh, you know, when you have nothing, you know, you, you, find, you find creative ways of, 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 of making something out of nothing. And that stuck with me for the rest of my life. So I'd pick up garbage, i try to make some artwork out of it, and i try to go door to door and sell to people. Uh, now, what I was doing was not very good, obviously. I'm a child. Uh, but I kept on going to the same doors over and over again. And I guess I'd, at some point they would get pissed off. Like, just give him like a quarter or something like that. And that's something that I really built on. And it was something that, that is core to, 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 my, to, to, to who I am as a person and, and, and how, I brought, how, I, how I approach the companies that I've, that, that I've built with my brother over the last couple of years. And I was a DJ in nightclubs, after hours. And so, uh, you know, I'd done a lot of DJing gigs. I'd kind of spun uh, here in Canada, a little all over in England. I even spun in, in Ibiza. And then um, when I was finishing my university degree, uh, I said to myself, hey, you know what? I really like this, this, this music industry thing. And uh, I think I'm going to start a record label. And so I kind of started at the same time with university, graduate university. And so I got my first job um, do, doing sales, basically selling education. And so what I would do is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I would work really, really extremely hard to be able to do my sales objectives. And so I built it slowly and slowly and slowly over those three years. Um, because you have to understand something. Uh, I'm 40 years old. And, uh, and when, when, I was, when I was your age, when I, was, you know, when I was 23, 24, 25 years old, entrepreneurship was not a thing. It was not, it was not a thing that was known. It was not a thing that was respected. It was not... I remember telling my mom, you know, mom, I want to be an entrepreneur. And she was like, oh, darling, you're really terrible at, at doing manual labor. I'm like, no, not that kind of entrepreneur. I meant like an entrepreneur, I want to start a business, you know? And um, people just didn't understand what it was. People did not understand what it was. But I knew in, in my heart of heart, this was, I wanted to start something and build something from nothing. With my first uh, business, it was a record label. And with that, I was, you know, I got some momentum. You know, I started, uh, we, got, we got a partnership deal with Universal Music when I was very young, sold thousands of records, and uh, it, was, it was quite a trip. I have a lot of stories. I was working with this artist uh, who happens to actually be my sister. So the artist was my sister, myself, I was the executive producer, and my little brother, uh, Basel, was the, he was the one who was filming everything, filmographer. And uh, so we would record one time, then they would record another time, we would record another time, then we would say, I would say, hi, hi, bye, bye, bye. bye. And so a couple of months later, we finished our record, they finished our record, and I was like, bye-bye. And that artist is Lady Gaga. Yeah, yeah. I know we yeah. say we, we create games, but it's not, for me, in my head, it's not really a game. There's gaming elements, there's gaming, there's gaming elements that I like. You know, I love gaming elements where it's like you win something, there's leaderboards, competition, or collaboration. I love all that stuff. But for me, Phenomena is not about that. We're just taking those elements thing is that what we wanted to do is to make it scalable, robust, and have it at a price point that any operator is going to want to buy it. And so that's really the name of the game, meaning that like have something at a price point, like a $50 or $60 or $70, that every operator out there is going to say, I see the added value for this, and by the way, it all works with all my games. That's what we want to do. So we position, we create the content, and we say this content also comes with our technology. And we use that as a marketing, kind of like we want to make money with this, of course, don't get me wrong, but we're using that as a leverage of pushing this technology forward to be a product that everybody's going to want. And that's kind of like, that's kind of the game plan of how we see and how we're, we are um, 
pushing the VPX uh, haptics. We want people to kind of to kind of start coming back to malls to be able to, uh, to to do something else other than shop. Because yes, there's people that are still going there, but we need to come up. There needs to be an added value of why you would go to a mall. Why would you go to a mall? So what I want is for you to come in, have fun here. Maybe you'll buy, I don't know, a drink. Maybe you're gonna get hungry, eat your food. Then after that, you're gonna go and maybe buy that thing that you wanted and run a microeconomics inside that mall. And then after that, take that and duplicate it over and over and over and over again so we have them all over the world. And we become the new cinema of tomorrow. At, at a place where there is high traffic and a need for someone like us to come in and to give them that added value. Anything, anything, anything that competes with that money that could have possibly gone into my pockets instead of somebody else's pockets, that's my competitor. So another virtual reality company is not my competitor. Another augmented reality company is not my competitor. It's did uh, the choo-choo train next to me, did, did, they, did they just get the money that was supposed to go into my pocket? That's my competitor. Okay, how do I beat you? Is my branding good enough? Is my experience good enough? Have I marketed to the right person? You know, have I done a survey? Have I spoken to the people and understand that this is exactly what they want? Have, is my communication good enough for that? So my competitor is very simple. It's I have, I have my parent, I have $20 in my pocket. Does my $20 go to Phenomena or does my $20 go to the choo-choo train next to me or whatever else? That is my competitor. That's the way I see things. I don't look at what other people are doing. And it is this time of innovation, which means that like the path is not clear. Nobody, nobody knows where, the, where this thing is actually going to go. I mean, we have hunches, we have a vision, we have, you know, we, we have, uh, we think it's going to go here, or it's going to go there. So that's the reason why I run my own race, and I don't look at what other people are doing and say, oh, they're doing that, we need to do that. I don't do that. This is innovation, which means there is no tracks in front of me. I only listen. One last thing. I listen. I listen to my instincts. My instincts. Everything I do is based on instincts. Oh, we need to please everybody. Well, you know what? We're coming in a time. And we're coming into a time that if you try to please everybody, you please nobody. And um, and the other one is uh, it's called versus, which is a shooter game. It's a it's a laser tag game. Like this stuff. Putting special effects on yourself. Like this is nobody does this, but yeah. this is all over the internet. You know? Yeah. Go into subcultures. Yeah, that's really cool. So that's what I mean when I say I want to do like stuff that's more left, stuff that's more it's just not it's not being done right now, you know? That's what it that's what that's what I find is exciting. And especially if we can do it in a platform where we're the new people, we're the new guys. Um, yeah.